Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. And of course, we're moving on to our, our next major conversation. We have a guest standing by us to do justice uh, to the ongoing strike by the Nigeria Labour Congress. Well, the Nigeria Labour Congress and its affiliate unions yesterday, Tuesday, defied warning security reports by the federal government and took to the streets of major cities in the country uh, to protest against the failure of the federal government, it said, to resolve the five-month strike by the academic staff union of universities. Uh, uh, specifically, the Nigeria Labour Congress said the money the two major political parties, the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party, generated from the sale of forms to aspirants uh, for the 2023 elections uh, could address ASU's demands. Now, in a quiet home state, Uche Mweke, uh, who represented the NLC national uh, president, Ayuba Waba, uh, faulted the excuses that there were no funds to meet the demands of university workers. Apart from Akwaibom State, other states which witnessed protests included Oyo State, Oshun State, Ogun State, Kwara State, Enugu State, Benue State, Sokoto State, Lagos State, and Plateau State. Earlier in the day, the president of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Ayuba Uwaba, appeared on television to say that workers union, uh, the workers' union will embark on a three-day nationwide strike um, if the federal government failed to accede to the demands of the Academic Staff Union of Universities after the ongoing two-day warning protest by the Nigeria uh, Labour Congress. And um, I'm glad to say we have joining us this morning uh, a labour and youth activist, uh, Tunle Wiseman Ajayi, who is the General Secretary of the United Action for democracy. I hope I got that right. Uh, Kule Ajayi, welcome uh, to the program and thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Um, uh, what's your assessment from what you've seen so far of uh, the nationwide protests by the Nigeria Labour Congress? Do you think these, um, I mean, I know it's just one day, but do you think so far, would you say so far so good for the NLC? It was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a fantastic engagement all over the country. And I think that even NSC themselves uh, are much more agitated because workers massively marched out everywhere in Lagos by 7 a.m. Over 2,000 workers were already out. And by the time we were marching to Alausa, you find a situation where more students, youths, workers were joining from everywhere. Uh, what, what, what we are happy about is because the Nigerian people are very, very conscious at this point in time. And it is no threat that uh, what was not achieved during the NSAS might be achieved again if the federal government continue to take the people for granted. Because what it means is that workers and youths from NSC, ASU, NANS, all youth structures all over the country will be uniting together to take up the Nigerian ruling class. Because aside the fact that uh, there is this 100 million form that already is like a national embarrassment for many of the youths who are averagely today, not even having up to a millionaire in their account, we have a situation that Nigerians generally are tired of not only the maleducation that is on board, we are tired of the insecurity. We are tired of the hike in prices of petrol, hike in prices of our goods, properties, our accommodation. A lot of things are not, are not going on with the country. So you could find workers yesterday coming up to vent their anger, not only on education, but generally on the high cost of living and a very low standard of living in Nigeria. Hmm. Uh, from, what, from what you're saying, it seems you were, you were part of the protest yesterday. Am I correct to say this? Yes, yes, yes. You, you confirm that in my voice, too. I'm, uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sensitive. Me. You sound like somebody who's been sh sh screaming or shouting solidarity forever for, uh, or we know go yeah. for like an hour. <laughs> um, yes, we know go yeah. When the NLC was invited to a meeting with, uh, or had a meeting with the... Um, the Minister of Labour and Employment, uh, Senator uh, Chris Ngiye, 
last week. And of course, when we saw some people saw reports of that meeting, it was uh, uh, almost uh, some people were saying, oh, here we go again. Uh, government inviting Labour for a meeting. Um, at that meeting, the Minister of uh, Labour Employment said, you know, there was there were two reports. Uh, a consensus by the federal government that, uh, you know, certain elements could you could use that the atmosphere of that uh, uh, that protest to to foment trouble. You know, it could be seen or perceived as a political protest. You know, because of the stance of the NLC in support of Labour Party and some other parties and their supporters may want to also <laughs> reply, uh, thinking or perceiving that as a protest against their own party. That was one. The second thing he said was that they received secure reports from the DSS saying that um, some uh, violent groups would want to use the protests uh, to cause havoc, to kill some people and uh, to cause some sort of uh, chaos. And did you get a sense of insecurity or some sort of situation that resembled what uh, Chris Ngege was talking about yesterday? It, uh, you know, everything the DSS in Ngege and Co. have been insinuating are false. <laughs> Uh, we were on the feed yesterday, all true. Workers, workers provided their own security for the protest. Everybody from the holoi poloi to the youth to the students are in support of these actions. And so there is no insecurity. The only insecurity is what the DSS should be facing, uh, where I swap Boko Haram are already threatening the president of the country. So, so, so the insecurity is not on the barricades. It's not at the streets, it's not on the streets where we are having our protest. In fact, the mass action is going to be as peaceful as ever because even people that are criminal-minded too respect united mass action. They respect the people. They understand very much that the issue is not with the oppressed class. It is with the ruling class. That's one. Then the second thing is that there is a general fear of the fact that the Nigerian Labour Congress, uh, the Trade Union Congress, uh, the Labour bureaucracy generally might betray the struggle. But this struggle is beyond the Labour bureaucracy. This struggle is a struggle of workers and are uh, being led by one of the most principled organizations of workers, which is ASU. ASU is highly principled. They are the ones leading the negotiations. And so we trust them very well. And aside that too, if the NRC uh, take the working people for granted this time around, they also understand what happened in October 2020. When they failed to march in September 28, 2029, in October 2020, the working people by October 6 started the answers. So, so I'm sure they won't repeat the same mistake again in history. Mm. You know, I think that the federal government should not be afraid of people's mass actions, which is going to actually be the answer to all of the problems we are having. They should be more afraid of the terrorists because we are coming to change situations for the better. The terrorists are coming to plunder the country into war. All right. All right. Um, uh, some, some, some analysts and some Nigerians have um, uh, looked at, have, have given their thoughts, shared their thoughts on the timing of uh, the ASU strike. Some people are saying it's uh, coming late. I mean, um, of course, the NLC uh, a protest, rather, saying it's coming late, uh, bearing in mind the fact that the ASU strike has been on for over five months now. Um, do you think, do you agree with those who say that NLC is acting late? Or have they waited for five months plus, you know, uh, if not six months, to, to, um, to hit the streets. I mean, they're saying this is coming late. What do you say to this? Of course. Of course, the actions are overdue. NSC should have taken action for a very long time. And, it's, and, we, are, and we are using this to call on the Trade Union Congress, the first also civil led Trade Union Congress, uh, the Kadriri Olale-led Trade Union Congress, to join up with the NSC actions. It's not too late until it is late. Uh, the past months that ASO has been on strike has not only been periods of reflection, it has helped to also mobilize the working people themselves from their houses. 
so that they can also understand that ASU is not on strike for being on strike sake. They are on strike for the betterment of the Nigerian working people youths. They are on strike to get us quality education at all levels that will not be as expensive as what it is. Because for the past month that they have been on strike, we find the Nigerian public officers getting their children to graduate abroad. Diaspora education gets more exposed. So the education tourism we have as it is today is showing very openly because of the ASU strike. So we are urging all other organizations of workers, civil society, to join up. It is never too late. There are those who've uh, pointed to the fact that um, the Nigerian Labour Congress has uh, already pitched its stand to the political party. Um, Senator Chris Ngimisa of Labour and Employment already gave its thoughts on what the constitution says and also what the Labour Act or the Labour Law says in the country about the use of funds and resources of the labor unions for political party purposes. Um, that being said, some have said, you know what, the NLC is merely embarking on a political, politically motivated exercise, a politically motivated protest that is simply meant to make the country uh, tense and to make the heightened attention in the country to further the purposes of Labour Party, whom they want to see win the next election. Uh, to the contrary, the, the, the NLC and the TUC has only adopted the Labour Party in theory. Because in, in, in action, it, it, it is not happening. You find it all over the country yesterday. Labour Party executives, Labour Party leaders were not part of the mass actions. They, they are already uh, are cut off from the working class. So you only find the NLC and TUC doing what is correct in terms of saying the Labour Party is our party. But in terms of getting workers to support the Labour Party, probably because of the current character of the Labour Party, having people as candidates that are not pro-Labour, that have bad uh, uh, antecedents against workers, you don't find most of the workers in the Labour Party. So politically too, the, the Nigerian labor movement is not in charge of the Labour Party. It is already being hijacked. That said, nobody from the ruling class can tell us, both legally and politically, that the working class do not have a right to a political party. And that is why we are also asking workers all over the country to support a pro-workers candidate for 2023. We shouldn't keep supporting people that will get to government and turn against workers, get to government, turn against labor, get to government, don't give us employment, get to government, destroy the industries, destroy the companies. We don't want pro in Woods uh, institutions, candidates that will come there, commercialize everything, casualize labor, uh, take workers for granted, don't pay uh, uh, salaries of workers, don't agree with ASU, don't fund education. We don't want such government. So legally and politically, the Nigerian workers have a right to a political party. They have a right to support a candidate that is going to stand for their own uh, aims and objectives. So anybody crying foul should go to court. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Um, 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 so so you, you're saying, uh, uh, Kuli Wiseman, uh, Jai, that, um, that, that this action by NLC is not political, and you're saying that the, the, the support of, uh, uh, by the NLC for Labour Party is just in theory. But I mean, that is what it is. It's theory. They, they're not going to go. They, they just have to say it. They've said it. And they have agreed yes, that they are supporting the Labour Party. I don't know what or how you're trying to quote it, Mr. Jai. NLC has said, they have said it, that they are su yeah. in support of Labour Party for the next presidential election. What else do you want them to, to do to show that they support the Labour Party? But but the cameras were everywhere yesterday. No, but it's not it's not about it's not well, about yesterday. It's not about yesterday. 
they if you want to are in support a party, of the party. You, if Labor, Labor, NLC, and TUC, I want you to know, don't they are just components of the labor movement. They are key components, they are center components of the labor movement. But most times, they do not determine the political way, the political road for the labor movement. What determines the political road for the labor movement is an, a party, candidates that stand with workers' ideas, uh, Mr. Mr. Jai, you, 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 you are, I, I don't, are you trying to say that, that uh, the NLC has not thrown its weight behind the Labour Party? Because it, it, it's, as as it's a simple black or white situation. They have said that Labour, NLC has said they support Labour Party. Yes, they said they own the Labour Party. They have said that they, the truth. they are supporting Labour Party for the next election. They've never said this in but previous yeah. elections, that, yeah, as far as I recall. So, can you understand that people may may suspect uh, and may have some misgivings about this current protest, especially given the fact that they have access to the government uh, in in this in this in this phase of the ASU strike? What is needed, most importantly, some have said, is mediation. All right, mediation to be able for the past five uh, to, to be able to come together to. To try and see how they can they can impress on the government uh, and labor to to both agree on something at least for now, you know that's what some have said, and also some have pointed to the fact that they had they have free access to the minister. They walked to his office to see him, so so they they can my, they my can help. My brother, you understand this Nigerian ruling class. Even if you eat on the same table with the federal government officials, the president. What matters is them doing the needful. It's not just about sitting with them, having access to them. It's about them doing the needful. For the past five months, ASU has been going from one negotiation. I don't think there's a month that ASU has not been called for negotiation. They have been mediating, they have been negotiating. But you know, just like the first Newton law of motion, the Nigerian ruling class, they are a body that will continue to be at arrest, except some sort of mass action is put into place, some sort of force, they won't take you lightly because for them, the little money that is left in the post, the large money that is left in the post, is not meant for the working people of Nigeria. It's meant for the private purses and pockets of some individuals who believe that they constitute the ruling class in the country. So, so it's not about negotiation and mediation. It won't solve anything. Hmm. So, so Nigerian working people themselves must ensure that the Nigerian ruling class fund education at all levels and then make sure that that education is highly qualitative and compulsory for all. Hmm. Some we have, can only compare yeah. to do that at the barricade. All right. Uh, uh, Kule, some have, some have asked the question, where was um, labor uh, during the NSAS protests? And even after the NSAS yes. protests, we continue to take up. We continue to take up the NSA and TEC over that, because what was missing during the NSAS is the working class involvement. I have done an article on this, and and I think that I think that Nigerian workers are have already learned their lesson. It was a chance to take back the country. But the working class was found wanting. I think next time, this won't happen. During the January 2012 uprising against forest subsidy remover, the youths were not so coordinated. They, they corrected this during the NSAS. The next time, those who coordinated the NSAS and those who coordinated the January uprising against forest subsidy remover, we have to unite and take back the country once and for all. All right. Uh, uh, do you, do you, finally, do you, do, you, do you expect these two days of nationwide protests to automatically force the hand of the federal government to give us their nearly one trillion naira they're asking for? Um, do you suspect that this will end up, you know, becoming the three-day nationwide strike that they're saying would happen next? Um, and will that also 
you know, force the federal government to give the ASU, you know, uh, the nearly one trillion naira. If that doesn't happen, what next? Will we shut down the country until that is paid. That that is that is that is the best. You find the speaker, speaker of the House of Rep, has gone back to school in Harvard, and most of our students are here to graduate. They are here to go back to classes. The hard way is the only way. We urge ASU, NNC, TUC to continue with mass actions. If by today ending, the federal government does not agree, the next phase of the three-day nationwide strike should start. Once that is not taken, it should become continue until we take back our country. All right. Uh, Kunle Wiseman Ajayi is the General Secretary of the United Action uh, for Democracy. He is a labor and youth activist. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. We have our discussions up next on the program. We look at a recent ruling by the National Industrial Court upping the salaries and emoluments of judges in the country. Seems some lawyers uh, think that is a bad idea. We'll be right back with more discussions on The Breakfast. <laughs>